Good morning, everyone. The Senate Judiciary Committee will come to order, and our first order of business will be a hearing on Senate, or excuse me, House Bill 2077. If we could have a bill brief from the reviser, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning, Committee. <clears throat> Jason Thompson with the Reviser Statutes Office. Uh, House Bill 2077, as amended by the House Committee of the Whole, uh, extends the Kansas Ju Criminal Justice Reform Commission. It also limits the commission's scope of study and adds a public defender to the commission. The uh, amendments are to KSA 21-6902, which is the statute that creates the commission, and it uh, will provide that the commission will analyze diversion programs, make recommendations for legislation that requires pre-filing and post-filing diversion to be available in all counties. Um, also look at establishing minimum standards for diversion, providing methods for removing diversions from criminal records. And the bill will also require the commission to discuss and develop recommendations for legislation to establish research-based standards and practices for community supervision programs that provide incentives to earn early discharge, also create standardized terms and conditions for supervision, create effective responses to behavior through incentives and graduated sanctions, and provide for a means to consolidate concurrent supervision into one agency. Uh, the bill removes the requirement of uh, studying specialty courts, surveying the availability of evidence-based programming, studying the placement of offenders within uh, the Department of Corrections, uh, evaluating information management systems, and certain other matters, uh, mostly because those have already been done by the commission. The House Committee of the Whole adopted an amendment offered by Representative Jennings uh, to provide that the commission shall monitor the implementation of previously endorsed commission recommendations and also receive updates, review data, and identify opportunities for coordination, collaboration, or legislation as needed. Uh, the bill finally adds a public defender appointed by the executive director of the Board of Indigence Defense Services to the commission and also requires the commission to submit a final report to the legislature by December 1st of 2021. And if passed, this would be effective on publication in the register. And I will stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Committee, any questions for the reviser? I have one question. This requires a one-time report I see on page four, December 1st, 2021. Okay, and that would be a policy question for um, the conferees. So seeing no further committee questions for the reviser at this time, we will invite our first proponent conferee to the podium, Jennifer Casella, Council of State Governments Justice Center, and she's appearing on WebEx, I think. So please introduce yourself and welcome to committee. I am, thank you, Chair, members of the committee. My name is Jennifer Casella, K-I-S-E-L-A. I'm a Deputy Program Director at the Council of State Governments Justice Center. Uh, we have submitted written testimony to the committee for your review. I'm happy to provide a brief overview for you and stand for any questions. Uh, the Kansas Criminal Justice Reform Commission was really essential over the last year in reviewing data and developing policy recommendations for this legislative session. There were several items that we were unable to fully uh, kind of dive into and receive as much stakeholder input as needed to develop policies that wouldn't have uh, some unanticipated uh, consequences. And so those particularly are around supervision, looking at developing uh, more uniform conditions of supervision. Currently in Kansas, there are multiple different conditions of supervision depending on the jurisdiction and the supervising entity. Um, there's also dual supervision that's occurring um, and looking at mechanisms to rectify so that a person does not have multiple uh, supervision officers doing duplicative work in order to reduce caseloads and make that more manageable for supervision officers, as well as a re-engagement unit that would target folks who are failing on supervision in order to connect them with services and get them re-engaged re in supervision. And so the Reform Commission is really essential to those components to receive the stakeholder input needed to make those successful. Uh, it's also an important component 
of the Justice Reinvestment Initiative in the state to have that interbranch uh, stakeholder engagement uh, that's reviewing data, looking at policies and making recommendations. And so I would stand for any questions that community members may have. Thank you, Ms. Casella. We're going to go ahead and ask, do we have other proponent conferees in the committee meeting room or on WebEx? And then we'll get to the questions at the end of all the conferees. Um, I do believe we have Patrick Armstrong also from Council of State Governments Justice Center on WebEx. Mm -hmm. That's correct, Chairperson Warren. Thank you for having us today. And thank you to Senator Wilborn and Senator Haley for their leadership on the Criminal Justice Reform Commission. I'm here to help respond to questions when that time comes as well. Sure, yes. Please go ahead and introduce yourself and welcome to committee. Thank you. I'm Patrick Armstrong. I work with the Council of State Governments and been working with the Reform Commission over the last couple of years. I am a project manager at the Council of State Governments. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Chairperson, I, I, I don't have further testimony. I, I was just making myself available to you all when the time comes for questions. Great, thank you, appreciate that. Uh, next, I think we have on WebEx, uh, Randall Bowman, Kansas Department of Corrections. Uh, please introduce yourself and welcome back to committee. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I hope you can hear me. I don't know if I can get video going today or not. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Bowman, that was a bit muffled. Are you standing by for questions if there are any? Yeah, Randy Bowman and Department of Corrections. And yeah, here for questions if you have them, Joe. Okay, great. Well, then I'll ask are there any other proponent conferees in the committee meeting room or on WebEx? Seeing and hearing none then. Um, committee, we will open it up for questions. You also have proponent written testimony from Randall Bowman, Kansas Department of Corrections. Any questions from the committee for our conferees? Yes, Senator Haley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, not, well, maybe, maybe an observation first to extend uh, to um, especially um, the various stakeholders that have been a part of the Criminal Justice Reform Commission, which was formed a couple of years ago. Um, it was a bundled bill, and the bill did produce the commission, as uh, the revisor shared earlier, Revisor Thompson. But I wanted to extend to um, a partner that we didn't know we would have at the time the bill was um, uh, was developed, and CSG, uh, the Council of State Governments, especially um, Mr. Patrick Armstrong and his team. They have provided um, some tremendous input to this process, and. Um, sure that other members of the commission might agree we have moved forward um, and what are quite a few recommendations uh, as a member of the of the reform commission I think only because of uh, the unexpected and very um, grateful partnership that we we uh, or the resources that were provided from the council of state governments so I did want to share that now um, for the question for the proponents, speaking of um, the many proposals, and they are many that have, have come forward, I was wondering if any could opine um, how we've seen implemented some of the suggestions that have been brought um, forth from the very careful study uh, and the review. Um, in some of these, how are all these good works now being reflected in terms of legislative policy in Kansas, or where are these themes or the bills uh, in process at this point? Um, in other words, is all this good work really yielding a benefit uh, for the people of Kansas by way of policy implementation? That would be a question for whichever conferee um, would be available to respond, and please identify yourself uh, as you do. Thank you. Hi, this is Patrick Armstrong, Council of State Governments. Uh, I'll allow other conferees also to chime in with, with their thoughts on this, because the 
part of the reason for the extension request, our understanding is that the COVID dynamic that hit Kansas and hit the nation limited in some ways the progress that could be made that all uh, based on all the work that was done by the folks on the commission. As Senator Haley uh, mentioned and Senator Wilborn knows as the two leaders of or two of the leaders on the, that commission when this commission was formed a couple of years ago, no one could have anticipated the uh, virus hitting how it did and it's slowing and stopping things. But for the commission's work, what that meant was last session when you all had to adjourn early, there was several recommendations that were on the table that you all did not even get to hear or have progressed through the process. And um, so to Senator Haley's question about how things have moved since the start of the commission, you all know last session slowed things down and actually delayed stopped things to some extent. And that not only slowed down the process of what can move legislatively, but it also slowed down what the commission's work, uh, what they can do in the meantime, because in the interim, they had to wait to see what legislative proposals were going to gain traction and uh, for them to be able to implement going forward. So there was a, a year loss basically due to unforeseen circumstances. And once around August of the past year, after the pandemic was well underway, the commission worked really hard for, I want to say two or three months from August to November, October is to try to uh, move forward as much as they could in the limited and short time span, which uh, as the Senator Haley mentioned, resulted in a, a, a great number of recommendations, but as far as implementation of those things and progress of those things, this session here is the first window of opportunity that anyone has had to see any of this move. And that's part of the reason for the request for the extension for the commission, because there's a, a lot of work to do, a lot of traction made, but the, based on what you all are able to decide on and move forward this session, that'll help the commission, uh, help inform what the commission is able to do going forward if it is it is indeed reinstated. So uh, the there are a handful of bills that have um, got a lot of traction and, and are, are making some progress. You all might remember there is one I want to say it's House Bill 2026 related to prosecutor diversion and increasing opportunities for diversion for people who are on supervision before they are convicted. Currently in Kansas, Senate Bill 123 treatment, the, the program is reserved for people who are convicted first of an offense, then they can receive treatment and then get on the road to recovery. That is one of the bills that was introduced two sessions ago, which I want to, I, I, which passed with over, uh, with a, uh, I want to say uh, unanimously, but I don't want to uh, speak out of turn. The uh, was very favorably received last session, but then fall because of COVID has now gone through both the house and, and at least through your committee here at the Senate Judiciary. Uh, and I believe that is one of the, uh, the, the, the few that have got, what well, has support last session, got traction this session. And as for, uh, there's a handful of others that I know have gone through the house. Uh, and I can, if it, it would help the committee send the list of the ones that moved, but I know, uh, I wanna say six or seven uh, legislative proposals that were on the table, gone through the house, and now are up for consideration by this committee. And I don't want to uh, bore you all by listening numbers and, and uh, topic areas unless that would be helpful. So I'll, I'll pause there to see if Senator Haley that answers your question somewhat. I think that the delay of the pandemic slowed down progress and that's why there's a request from the extension for how to implement some of these things. But feel free to let me know if that didn't quite get there. Chair and uh, Mr. Armstrong, thank you for that very briefly. Um, I appreciate that. It gives me some um, some ray of consolation. And again, I thank uh, CSG Council of State Governments for the input that has been invaluable. You and your team, sir, uh, for helping to move this further beyond 2026, um, which of course looked at diversion, uh, the extension of our concept, which Kansas, as you know, pioneered uh, with treatment over uh, incarceration for those with substance abuse, which Senate 123 implemented. Um, from your, Mr. Armstrong specifically, from your bird's eye view, because you work with many states, has any uh, similar effort or commission in any other state, um, despite the pandemic or what other reason, moved as sluggishly um, in terms of implementing, in this case, 59, I count, we have 59 recommendations that came 
um, out of this commission. Has any other state that you're aware of, sir, uh, where uh, your team has been involved moved as sluggishly in the implementation beyond the one or two successes that you can identify for Kansas? I know it's a loaded question, but um, <laughs> I am concerned about, you know, the uh, efficacy of the good works just laying on the table and not moving forward. Go ahead, Mr. Armstrong, if you can. Absolutely, uh, Senator. The, 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 my short, uh, quick response to that uh, is that the, uh, as you all know, legislative sessions go at varying paces in, in different places, and they're, they're held up and they speed up based on dynamics internally into the state. But I, I think that once sessions get going, uh, safe to say that we've seen in other states, uh, there are states that are, have moved in their session, and uh, as you all in Kansas have in, in some areas as well. I know there are probably areas that you all are prioritizing and those things are moving, uh, but, but from our perspective, we would agree that criminal justice issues should remain a priority, especially in Kansas, where there's a relief in the prison population, uh, thanks to, well, uh, in part, and responsible, the, the, the pandemic responsible for some of the relief in the prison population, but you all have talked about in other committee hearings, the fact that uh, despite the relief, there's, if practices don't change, you all might be where you were 12 months ago when the prison population in Kansas was over capacity. And, uh, and, and two, two years ago, corrections officer safety was in jeopardy because of the crowded, crowded facilities. And if policies and practices don't change, once the courts are un, uh, once the courts get back to business as usual, we are thinking and seeing in other states and anticipating that uh, prison populations will return to where they were previously if practices don't change. So Kansas, like other states, do need to, do need to continue to prioritize criminal justice reform as a as a key issue. And, and you all have the right people at the table in this commission, and and we're uh, here to support to the extent that you all need us this session and and going forward. Thank you, uh, Mr. Armstrong, for your gracious response, and Madam Chair, for your indulgence. Thank you. Uh, Senator Wilborn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, normally, I am reluctant to extend commissions under the theory of expanded government and bureaucracy. But having served on this commission, along with the ranking member, uh, Senator Haley, there's been a lot of good work that has been done and recommended. But more importantly, this bill is structured in such a way that narrows the focus within a contained guardrail so that it's not uh, running amok. And I think the commission deserves uh, another bite at the apple on some of these narrowly focused areas. So at the end of the day, I'll be supporting this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Committee, other questions? I'm, I'm wondering, there's a one-time reporting date on page four if the commission is charged with uh, continued monitoring uh, on page two. Is that something we might want to, Mr. Armstrong, have more regular reports made? Uh, yes. Uh, well, the, the, uh, thanks, Madam Chair. The, to your there is the one final report in December, but that doesn't take into account that this commission has tended to meet monthly. And in each of those commission meetings, Senator Wilborn and Senator Haley know this, we, as we're working with the commission, do report out monthly. So those regular reports will be there in order to check in on the monitoring and implementation uh, as it's, as it's uh, listed out in the, in the current version of the, of the bill. So there will be more current reporting and to the extent that you all would need and more report out to Folks like yourselves, we'd be happy to uh, support and, and do that if that's what's needed. Thank you. Committee, other questions for our conferees? Madam Chair, can I chime in one thing? Sure. Please identify yourself. Sure. Oh, there you go. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't recognize you. It's okay. Jason Thompson with the revisor's office. I just wanted to clarify for the committee, maybe it wasn't clear because it's not a typical sort of um, expiration or sunset provision. Um, the way this has been interpreted is because the final report was due by December 1st of 2020, the commission essentially stopped at that point. And so the extension to December 1 of 2021 means they'll wrap back up, continue their work and submit another report. They've already submitted one in 2019, one in 2020. 
this would be the final report in 2021, the end of this year, before you come back in January. And at that point, the commission would cease because they would have done their final report. It, it's a little confusing because, like I said, it's not a traditional sunset clause, but that's the way the commission has been operating, as though it will expire when that final report um, is filed. Thank you for that clarification, uh, Mr. Thompson. Committee, Madam there are Chair. no other further oh. questions for our proponent conferees. I will ask, do we have any uh, neutral conferees? We do. We have Nicholas Reinecker, um, who I think is appearing on WebEx. So please introduce yourself and welcome back to committee. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee for allowing me to speak today. Uh, I am in a neutral capacity because I do believe that the base, the bill is, is a good bill when it comes to synthetic uh, substances. However, my testimony is in regards to subsection B uh, number nine, which is study other matters that <clears throat> as the commission determines are appropriate and necessary to complete a thorough review of the criminal justice system. And as a neutral uh, conferee, I would like to see language added into the bill that would allow the commission to study the issue of cannabis or substances or substance use disorder or the DSM-5 and how it all reacts uh, to, to what we're trying to do here. Uh, as many of you know, I've been coming up to the legislature advocating for the decriminalization of cannabis for at least the, the last eight years. Uh, spending a lot of time, and this is not a partisan issue. It's a, you know, it's more of a human issue. You just look at uh, the uh, honorable senator from Wyandotte, uh, who for the most part, I disagree with politically, but both of us now for the last eight years, uh, at least have been on a journey trying to join forces with other uh, so-called conservative uh, members of the legislature and trying to, um, uh, repair this situation of an undue prohibition when it comes to a natural occurring uh, substance that does not kill people. Now, when we're talking about methamphetamine and crack cocaine and heroin and all that stuff, all these diversionary actions, you know, I guess is okay. But, you know, you look at the difference between smart on crime and hard on crime and where we're all going. Uh, this is a missing piece that needs to be uh, uh, studied and, and checked out. Um, so, I guess, you know, like I said, I've been here before and you know that if given the chance that I could uh, do a diatribal thesis about, about cannabis, but I will just uh, say that um, I wish the study would be, uh, or that cannabis would be studied more and that in order to make a lot of this criminal justice reform work, I believe it behooves the state of Kansas to uh, deschedule cannabis and not have it an issue when we're dealing with criminal justice reform. Thank you for your attention and your, the opportunity to speak. And thank you to your committee assistant for their patience uh, with me as well. I'll stand up for any questions. Thank you. Um, I will then ask, we don't have any other neutral conferees signed up, but are there any neutral conferees in the committee meeting room or on WebEx? Seeing and hearing none, then we don't have any opponent conferees signed up to provide testimony, but I'll ask, do we have any opponent conferees in the committee meeting room or on WebEx? Seeing and hearing none then. Committee, any questions for our neutral conferee? Seeing none, then we will close the hearing on House Bill 2077. Thank you, committee, for your work. Uh, we will then open the hearing on House Bill 2298. If we could have a bill brief from the reviser, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jason Thompson with the reviser of statutes again. Uh, House Bill 2298 uh, changes some requirements for service of process on non-resident drivers and clarifies service of process on certain business entities. Um, I will note for the committee at the outset that this may look very familiar to you. Uh, you saw it in, in 2020 as Senate Bill 253. Uh, it was recommended by this committee and uh, passed out of committee um, and then passed the Senate 39 to 0. So uh, the Senate has seen this and um, sent it out to the House before. Um, Section 1 of the bill amends KSA 8-402. That's the statute concerning service of process on non-resident drivers or their representatives. We have current law in 8-401 
that provides non-residents driving in Kansas are deemed to accept the Secretary of State as their agent for service of process arising from any accident or collision that occurs while operating the vehicle in Kansas. And then 8-402 provides the requirements for that service of process. And right now it just directs uh, that certain documents have to be delivered to the defendant by registered mail or personally without the state by a sheriff or deputy sheriff in such state. The bill instead authorizes service on a defendant through the Secretary of State by mail with return receipt delivery under subsection B1 or through personal service by the plaintiff with notice of service provided to the Secretary of State under subsection B2. Uh, the bill also requires the Secretary of State to keep a record of all process served under the section so that you'll be able to keep track of that. Um, section 2 then shifts gears from the drivers to um, KSA 60-304 which is in the rules of civil procedure uh, concerning service of process generally for, for civil actions and many other um, kinds of um, process service. The bill amends just subsection F um, regarding service on a resident agent for certain business entities. And it's just to reference uh, domestic and foreign limited liability partnerships. Um, our understanding is this is just an oversight from a prior uh, bill. Those entities are already included in current law subsection E, as I noted uh, regarding direct service. They just didn't make it into subsection F. So, in some ways, it's a little bit of technical cleanup. Uh, with that, I'll answer questions and, and let the Secretary of State conferee handle uh, any of the heavy lifting, hopefully. Mr. Thompson, committee, any questions for the reviser? Seeing none, then we will invite our proponent conferee, Clay Barker, from the deputy who is the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State uh, to the podium and welcome to committee. This is the second time in two committees uh, we get to see you, Mr. Barker. Uh, so it's a pleasure to have you uh, here at the Capitol and my neighbor as well, folks. So uh, <laughs> that's always a, a fun time. So uh, yeah, our kids are good friends. But anyway, so with that, uh, we'll hear from our conferee. Make sure your microphone is on so we can actually hear you. <laughs> good now. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Committee. I realize you've all been doing some heavy lifting lately, so I appreciate the chance to hear this bill. It's pretty simple and straightforward. The Secretary of State's office is, is constantly endeavoring to have continual process improvement, to be easy on our customers, get rid of outdated statutes, and make small corrections. This is one that's been on our to-do list for a while, and it's, it's nothing that'll make the news. It just makes the process easier. And as the reviser said, it has two parts. The first has to do with if a non-resident driver has an accident in Kansas, how the Kansas victim can serve the lawsuit on that non-resident driver. And for the lawyers here, this is the case we all learned after Penoyer v. Neff. Um, might bring back bad memories from law school. But essentially, just by the mere act of driving into Kansas, and every state has the same rule, uh, a non-resident driver has made the Kansas Secretary of State their resident agent, the same way a, a company has a resident agent. So that Kansan files their lawsuit in court, judge signs off on it, they take it to the Secretary of State and we serve it, service it, serve it in the other state. Uh, this statute just provides an option for the Kansas victim to directly serve the um, out-of-state driver. So that it doesn't change anything. It just adds an option for Kansas drivers. And this just modernizes the statute. A lot of other states have already done this. We're kind of catching up. Uh, the second part of the statute, as long as we were doing service of process, is that there's rules of civil procedure, just the general rules that apply to all civil lawsuits, uh, instruct how to serve different entities, uh, children, government agencies, disabled people, and businesses. And the business portion lists a long list of all the different types of businesses out there and for some reason we overlooked limited liability partnerships and a judge could look at that statute and say well if the legislature didn't put it in there they must have meant not to have it in there and it really i believe was just an oversight and we're just adding in uh, the limited liability partnerships to that statute and that is it's pretty straight and simple and i'll uh, point out the house did pass this 120 to 4 and i'll stand for any questions madam chair Thank you. Uh, we don't have any other proponent conferees um, signed up, but I will ask, are there any other proponent conferees in the committee meeting room or on WebEx? Seeing and hearing none then, committee, uh, any questions for the conferee? Uh, I appreciate the um, 
sort of modernizing our service of process statutes and um, so with the, the the Kansas victim could directly serve their civil petition on a uh, an out-of-state defendant without going through the Secretary of State if this bill were to be enacted. Is that what the, the bill does? That's correct, Madam Chair. They'd have to let us know they've done it, but they can take care of it directly, which may be quicker. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find an out-of-state resident, and, and that Kansas victim wants to do it directly and quickly, especially if that out-of-state resident is trying to hide and avoid process. And with the change for the LLPs, that just brings it into conformity with how we would serve currently LLCs and corporations and other entities? Correct. It's just in the statute, there's a list of different business entities and it explains how to serve them. And this just adds limited liability partnerships to that alphabet soup of different business entities out there. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for the conferee? Seeing and hearing none, then thank you for your testimony today. Thank you for coming again uh, to the Capitol. We will ask, are there any neutral conferees in the committee meeting room or on WebEx? Seeing and hearing none, uh, we will ask, are there any opponent conferees in the committee meeting room or on WebEx? Seeing and hearing none, then committee, we will close the hearing on House Bill 2298. We will then turn to, we had two confirmation hearings yesterday regarding two Kansas Court of Appeals appointees. One was Ms. Leslie Isherwood and the other was Ms. J.C. Hurst. Uh, committee, do you still have in your committee folders the um, confirmation packets or did we, we, we pick those up? Um, so if any committee member needs their committee packet back uh, while we turn to discussion first of uh, the, the appointee we heard from first yesterday um, and just a moment. Thank you for standing at ease, committee. I uh, just needed to bring up my notes. I um, wanted to remind the committee that we will now turn to um, discussion of the, um, the consideration of the appointment by Governor Kelly of Leslie A. Isherwood as a judge of the Kansas Court of Appeals to serve subject to retention elections as set forth in statute succeeding the Honorable Steve Lieben. So, committee, um, I will open it up for discussion, thoughts, comments. Yes, Senator Gossage. Madam Chair, my only comment would be that I move that we um, confirm the nomination for uh, Ms. Isherman, Isherwood. Uh, thank you, Senator. And to remind the committee, there are three kinds of actions that the committee can take, so um, I, that's why I needed my notes to make sure we get the uh, verbiage correct. Um, the possible motions include moving the committee recommend the appointment favorably for confirmation by the Senate, moving that the committee recommend the appointment be not confirmed by the Senate, or move the committee report the appointment to the Senate without recommendation. So we'll be looking for a motion if there's no other uh, discussion on that. It has been our charge to um, have the opportunity to review the appointment materials and to hear from the appointee. Uh, we have done that, so we are now moving to um, discussion and we'll open the floor for any discussion or a motion to the committee regarding the appointment. Senator Gossage. I would move her, that she be, that we can, um, now I totally forgot what you said, favorably. Move her out of the committee favorably. Certainly. So is the motion then that uh, you move the committee recommend the appointment favorably for confirmation by the Senate? That is it. Yes, thank <laughs> you. Uh, do we have a second? Yes, Senator Bowers, second. Uh, committee discussion on the motion. 
I would like to comment that appreciated that we had the opportunity, uh, that I had the opportunity to meet with Ms. Isherwood uh, before the, the hearing and appreciated uh, the um, open and candid answers and the time that she took to meet with me and I think some of the other members of the committee and um, was answering the questions, um, seemed very forthrightly and has the uh, kind of experience that we would be looking for uh, in a Court of Appeals judge. So further discussion on the motion. Seeing and hearing none then, committee, you have heard the motion that we, that the committee recommend the appointment favorably for confirmation by the Senate. All in favor signify by aye. All those opposed, nay. The motion carries. Thank you, committee. We will now turn to the uh, confirmation of the uh, appoint consideration of the appointment by Governor Kelly of J.C. Hurst as a judge of the Kansas Court of Appeals to serve subject to retention elections as set forth in statute, succeeding the Honorable Melissa Standridge. So I'll remind the committee and those listening online that again, the two appointments are completely separate for completely separate spots and it is not just one or the other, but we do consider each of them separately. Um, so with that then, we will open it up for discussion after having had our appointee um, before the committee yesterday. Yes, Senator Baumgartner. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the committee recommend the appointment of J.C. Hurst favorably for passage presentation um, as well as her interview was genuine she offered a fresh perspective and a very candid judicial philosophy yes a second from Senator Haley thank you um, committee the motion is that the committee recommend the appointment favorably for confirmation by the Senate any further discussion on the motion uh, I would like to just add and reiterate the statements of Senator Baumgartner. I also appreciated meeting with Ms. Hurst uh, in my office before the confirmation hearing and again found her answers to be genuine and forthcoming and um, someone that would be a good addition to the Kansas Court of Appeals and um, in enjoyed um, hearing her forthcoming and uh, genuine answers here in committee. So with that committee, if there's no further discussion, uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by aye. All those opposed, nay. The motion carries. Uh, committee, if you'll stand at ease for just a moment, I'll check my notes. Thank you, committee. Um, I would like to turn to working um, the two bills that we just heard today. I think they're fresh in our mind if we don't have any uh, need to delay to wait for amendments. We can go ahead and work those. We will then open working on House Bill 2077. If you'll remember, that's um, extending the Kansas Criminal Justice Reform Commission, limiting the commission's scope of study, and adding a public defender to the commission. So with that committee, we will open it up for discussion and any amendments. Yes, Senator Wilborn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. It's my honor uh, having served on that committee and to understand that the work that they do, I recommend that we pass out House Bill 2077 as amended favorably for passage. Uh, Mr. Reviser, is the motion um, correct? It was amended um, in the House, so when we're, we're moving it here, is it House Bill number 2077 as amended or not? Because Senate committee did not amend it. Just want to make sure we get this right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jason Thompson with the Reviser. Uh, you don't have to say the as amended by the House part. You, you can, uh, but just be clear that it's the, the bill not as amended by you, so you could just do it as be passed. That would be fine. Okay, thank you. So as, as amended by the House then. Yes, do we have a second? Senator Haley. Committee, discussion on the motion? Seeing none then, 
You have heard the motion to pass out favorably House Bill 2077. All those in favor, aye. All those opposed, nay. The motion carries. Let's next turn to then working uh, House Bill 2298 regarding changing requirements for service of process on non-resident drivers and clarifying service of process on certain business entities. Uh, committee, any uh, discussion or amendments? Seeing none then, uh, do we have a motion? Yes, Senator Baumgartner. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move we pass out House Bill 2298. Do we have a second? Yes, Senator Gossage seconded it. Thank you. Uh, committee, you've heard the motion. Any discussion on the motion? I'll just comment that it's it's good to see that we're updating the service of process statutes to uh, help ensure that uh, civil process can continue and our Kansas residents have access to the courts. Uh, with that then, committee, um, you've heard the motion. All those in favor, aye. All those opposed, nay. The motion carries. We'll stand at ease for just a moment and uh, I will further check my notes. Thank you uh, for standing at ease, committee. Uh, committee, we have um, heard a couple of bills today. We've worked them, passed them out of committee. We have um, rec made our recommendation on the two appointees that we heard yesterday. So um, with that, we'll give ourselves a little bit of a break and um, adjourn a little bit early. So thank you, committee, and we are adjourned. <laughs>